Thanks to its history and military might, Russia is a country everyone has heard of. But how many of you actually know this country? For instance, did you know that Russia is a federation? In this series, we'll try to learn a bit more than what you hear on the news. Today we go to the North Caucasus and discover the province of Stavropol. Hello and welcome to 7 Facts. Stavropol Krai is one of the many federal subjects of Russia. This Krai is located in the North Caucasus region, an area that's been many times in the news for the wrong reasons. But today that's not what we're going to talk about. We're here to talk about all the good things I bet you never heard of. Stavropol, home to almost 3 million people, is on the northern slopes of the mighty Caucasus Mountains with splendid landscapes of all kind. It's an amazing place located right at the confluence of the great European and Asian civilizations. So let's dig in and find out what Stavropol Krai is all about. This area has seen many nations come and go in its 6,000 years of human habitation. Scythians, Sarmatians, Huns, Khazars, Alans, Mongols, Ottomans all had their grip on Stavropol at one point or another. However, since 1777 the Russian state had taken control of this area. As the imperial forces advanced further and further into Caucasia, the region became an important economic and military center, so Stavropol saw rapid growth and development. Since then, it had lost most of its strategic role, nevertheless it continues to be one of Russia's most populated federal subjects. With over 400,000 people living in it, the city of Stavropol is not only the capital of the Krai, but also one of the biggest in the entire area. It was founded in 1777 as a military fort, where Don Kozak settled with the mission to defend the borders of the Tsarist Empire. This place was in fact one of the main urban centers that actually aided Russian expansion into the Caucasus. Today Stavropol is still the main cultural and economic hub of the area. And it shows. In the past 10 years, the estimated population growth was at around 10%, with no signs of slowing down. So I guess it's a fair bet to expect to hear a lot more about this city in the years to come. Before we go to the next fact, I'd like to ask you one thing. This video isn't sponsored, so perhaps you'd consider supporting this channel by becoming a patron. If you still enjoy my content, go visit my Patreon page and help this channel out. And with that said, let's go to fact number 4. If there's one word you can think of in relation to the Caucasus, it's diversity. And Stavropol is no exception. While it's true that most people living here are Russian ethnics, they're not by a long shot alone. About 33 ethnic groups with a headcount of more than 2,000 people share this territory, not to mention the smaller groups plus the many refugees that settled here after leaving the more troubled regions in the south. Along with the Russians, you'll find thousands of Armenians, Greeks, Gypsies, Ukrainians, Turkmens, Tatars, Kazakhs, Jews and even Germans, Koreans or Romanians. And I haven't even scratched the surface yet. This is without a doubt one of the most diverse regions not just in Russia, but the whole of Europe. Russia gave the world a great many important historical figures. One of them is among the most famous Russian political leaders of our time, the last president of the Soviet Union. His name is Mikhail Gorbachev and he hails from Stavropol. He was born in 1931 in the small village of Privolnye from a Russian father and a Ukrainian mother. His family was a poor one and close relatives died or were arrested during the famines and purges initiated by Stalin, accounts that deeply influenced Mikhail. Now I won't go too deep into the details of his life. I guess for now it's enough to say that he was a reformist, or at least tried to be one, both within the Union and in the country's relations with the Western world and the Eastern Bloc. But ultimately, he is best known for being the president under which the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics collapsed. Stavropol is an interesting name for a Russian city or region. 
it doesn't really sound Slavic. That's because this name is the Russian rendition of a Greek ancient city, Stauropolis. The two aren't really connected in any way. The local legends say that while building the fortress that would become the city, soldiers found a stone cross and decided to name the place City of the Cross or Stavropol. In reality though, the original fort was roughly built on two axes which crossed each other, a shape reminiscent of a cross, which is how the place actually got its name. Stavropol was once the terminus of a road that was meant to connect the Caucasus with the rest of the empire, the Great Cherkassy Tract. This route was actually a postal road, along which Russian settlements were established, but this was also the gateway for Russian troops into the Caucasus. The Great Cherkassy Tract was used for the transfer of troops during the Caucasian War and the Russian-Turkish Wars, so it played a crucial role in conquering all the lands north of the Caucasus Mountains. While opinions differ on this matter, most historians believe that without this seemingly insignificant road, the gradual takeover of this troubled region would have been very difficult, if not impossible. Please leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this content. Leave your comments downstairs and don't forget there's a Patreon page where you can support this channel. I hope to see you next time. Bye.